Hello again and welcome back to my channel. First of all, a Merry Christmas to all of you and I hope that 2022 brings you a year of blessings and goodness. Um, today I thought I would show you the colouring things I got for Christmas from family. And um, yeah, so um, I got gifted a set of Polychromos pencils. Um, and I actually bought these for myself in December, early December, and um, they're a second-hand set that I picked up with such, came in such a beautiful case. Let me just lift you up so you can see a bit better. Um, so they came in this lovely case, and it's a full set of polychromos, um, barely even touched, and... Um, I was able to swatch them before my elder son took them away from me and insisted I only have them on Christmas Day. So as you can see, I've already pulled out a few of the colors and I've begun coloring with them. And I must say, oh, they are exquisite. I am really, really happy with these. Um, having used Prismacolors for almost a year and then switching to these, um, and, and just looking at the way I color, I mean, oh, I must say it's, it's quite a difficult one to say which one I prefer. And at this stage, I do think that the um, polychromos may be more suited to the way I color, which is with a lot more layers. Whereas Prismacolor, um, you can use less layers and on, on the right paper, they blend so beautifully into each other. Um, so I think right now that's where I'm standing on the polychromos. They, you know, top favorite, followed closely by Prismacolors. And then um, I don't know. I mean, at first it was would definitely be Castle Arts. But the Artises are also really, really lo lovely. Um, and what I really like with these compared to the um, Prismacolors is the um, soft core lid is sealed. And these are also wax based, so you can very easily layer a couple of um, layers of Prismacolor and then go over with the fine detail in the Faber Castell Polychromos because they're oil and they won't bl um, blend out the way wax does. So these are really, really great for fine details, um, for hair, and yeah. Um, I think they're absolutely lovely and what I found works really well is doing um, layers upon layers and picking colors that are close together um, but I've also been experimenting with um, different colors and finding out how um, to blend those into each other and obviously I, I'm not a professional artist and I'm just working these out based on videos I've watched and um, my own experimentation. So if you are new to Polychromos, uh, do go check out a few YouTube videos and um, hear from the professional artists. I have watched um, artists on YouTube who do professional realism art. And a lot of the time they will use the polychromos and I found that also very helpful to learn how to um, create a base coat and then very smoothly go over in light layers with um, and build up the intensity of the color. I did also try a solvent on them and I found that that worked really well as well provided um, there was enough pigment on the paper. If there isn't enough pigment on the paper it doesn't blend very well and um it, it just kind of stays the same way and so um i'm planning on doing a video shortly using uh castle arts polychromos artesas and prismacolor with the solvent i do have um and yeah we can have a look and see how that goes the set also came with a few metal colors um but i'm not a fan of using them um, I haven't got the hang of, of metallic colors. So that's my polychromos. And then um, I was given three coloring books. This is uh, Girl with Poems, Volume 1 by Momo Girl. And um, it's all in Korean. So the only way to know what 
the write-up is is to use a translator app and you know scan the text and translate it to English bearing in mind that um, they are not a hundred percent accurate but it gives you the idea so lovely lovely page and I mean because of all the fine details um, I think polychromos or even gel pens would work really well on this title page and then all the information I would have to scan it does come with pictures already colored in or painted by the artist I love this one this one's my favorite and to create the background would be a huge challenge for me. I appreciate the detailed artwork in this picture, but it really creeps me out. <laughs> I'm all happiness and um, sweet and innocent. So on this side, you have the same image colored four different ways. Um, and then the same over here. I quite like the Christmas tree in the background. So this is great for, you know, getting ideas on, you know, what colors to use, that sort of thing. And the paper is really lovely. It's thick. I think you could use quite a lot of media on here. Um, if I can bring you up a bit so you can see a bit better. And as you can see, I want to do this picture. I'm just struggling to work out the exact um, details. So I'm thinking this should be gold and then have a white halo around it into some sort of background. Um, and then the harp would be a wooden gold look. Um, this looks like holly and berry, so that would be red and green. But then I'm not sure what to do, her wings and, you know, I suppose I could do an intense red dress and then sort of golden wings. I don't know. And then here you have on this side the poem with the accompanying picture. And it's the same pattern throughout the book, the poem and the picture. And when you translate the poem, some of them are really, really beautiful. And I think it's really sweet, actually, to have a poem accompanied by an illustration. This is lovely because you've got a bit of grayscale showing you how to do the water. Um, And then this is the picture in the beginning here. So you could have a go with that. And I think these smaller pictures here would be great for testing out your medium, um, testing out watercolor, your pencils, and seeing what works really, really well. I just want to flip through quite quickly for you so that this video doesn't get too long. And I, I love the Japanese um, coloring books because the line art is not very thick. It is lovely and delicate and it does help to create more realistic um, pictures. Although bearing in mind with a realism art, it does require a lot more time. Um, A rainy day. It's a pity this one isn't hasn't got a, a boy version of it because it would really remind me of my um, preteen. <laughs> uh, I don't have daughters, so I'll just have to pretend, you know, put the emotion into it. I love this picture. It's a beautiful grayscale. And I'm toying with the idea of using it um, during the winter months. 
But as always, uh, there's just so many beautiful pictures. And then you have a few instruments here. Um, and I suppose you could also test different medium on these. And then this is the picture on the front here. I'm not sure about this picture. Um, other than it's summer and it's really hot and they're all melting. But I don't understand this. And then you have an alien picture. And it's a really big book, so I can't lift my camera much more for you, unfortunately. I won't be coloring this picture. I just, yeah, it's just not my style. It actually creeps me out. <laughs> um, but these are just beautiful. And the black background would be lovely with... Um, pastel pencils I quite like this one and then on this side you have a few more pictures smaller versions um, so I suppose you could practice on these as well. Which is probably not a bad idea because then you can um, test different ideas and get a feel for it. And that's the end of it. These are the other... Uh, volume she has done. Next up I was given um, Wild Soul by Gracia Salvo. This is printed on the Amazon paper or the Amazon edition. Now I, I don't know if it's Amazon paper so I'm not sure how this paper is going to um, hold up. And some of you may have already seen some of these pictures colored in. Um, they're all grayscale which takes a lot of the guesswork out and um, it's a combination of beautiful girls and beautiful animals um, some places you have you don't have to worry about backgrounds like this picture others you've got plenty open space to be creative with your backgrounds I've just recently seen a picture on Instagram. This picture was completed. It does remind me of a winter um, type scene. So you could possibly color her dress a light blue um, or light, a lilac. I know Zucchini Kitty has a um, few videos where she co completed this picture. So if you want to do this one, you can go check out her um, YouTube channel. And this would be Indian elephants. Um, African elephants have much larger ears and are also larger. Um, and obviously... You can tell by the, the jewels and the painting on the elephant. I'm not sure how to give her chest um, shape. Because she's lying on her back, so you'd need to shade in her breasts. You can't really draw them, you'd have to shade them. Um, and yeah, I've only, I normally just do faces and necks. <laughs> 
so that this one's going to be a challenge in order to actually give her body um, some shape and realism to it. And they're all single sided, which is great because you could use, um, if you put a piece of cardstock between each page, you could use markers, water paint, watercolors. Um, whether the paper will respond well, I don't know, but by putting a piece of paper between your pages, you'll protect the other drawings from any bleed throughs. And this is one I want to do. I just don't know about the background. And you can find um, a tutorial on Chris Ching on Chris Cheng's uh, channel, she colored this picture using Prismacolors. There are two versions. There is the Amazon version, and I think the version on Etsy is um, more of like your artist edition. So if you buy the one on Etsy, even though it costs more, it will give you the paper quality for um, probably a lot more medium than what you can use on on this page um, in this book sorry so I want to be testing this one and then finally I have Ken Matsuda's book on animals um, his Ken Matsuda coloring book and I really really love these so again you have I think it's either in Japanese or Korean, but you've got all the write-up, and then his paintings are printed in the book for you to use. And they're just beautiful. Um, so they, they make a great reference picture. You can always use the same colors and just go for it. Takes the guesswork out. And then here he's got a few tips. Um how to approach the paintings with water-based um, mediums. So we've got a bit of a tutorial there for you. And then if you like if you use the translator apps, you can scan all the writing and translate it and get an idea of what he's saying. And then you've got the same set of pic well, a different set of pictures. Or is it the same one? Let's check. So the same picture, colored differently using, I think these are Faber-Castell polychromos. And it shows you how to go about um, coloring in the picture. So you can use both um, watercolor and pencils. And introductory page. And then you have all the pictures. Um, for you to color and yeah don't don't be intimidated by the details just start with what you know and work along so if you'd like to see me color one of these pictures let me know in the comments um, which one you're interested in and I will give it a go I've seen this one colored I love wolves, so I'm keen to do this one. And either of these two pages, or both of them, because um, they're simple, so um, there's less details to worry about. And that's my other tip, if you get a coloring book and you're not sure where to start or you feel a bit intimidated just find a more simple page and start there
And this one is a Kingfisher. I think Zucchini Kitty painted this one, so that's on her YouTube channel. We've got a Bird of Prey. I started this with Prismacolors. And I found the Prismacolor worked really, really lovely on the paper. But you can feel it's good quality. It's not a pure white. Um, it's thin, but I think you can feel there's a bit of texture to it. So I think watercolor should do it pretty okay. And then at the back here, you have all the pictures with his paintings next to them. And you can take a scan the QR codes. And what it will do is it takes you to his Instagram account and it will show you the picture enlarged. And then you can use the same, um, just copy his picture or you could do your own. It's entirely up to you. And I found it quite helpful to have his pictures, um, especially when, when one feels intimidated by a, um, a coloring book, to have these sort of pictures is lovely because you can just use it as a starting point and refer back to it and color and color and in that process you get used to the, the style of the artist and so yeah that is um, just some Christmas goodies I thought I'd share with you um, so look forward to coloring in these in the new year and um, thank you for having a look with me um, let me know in the comments um, which one of these you would like me to start in and I will do a video. Um, have a happy new year and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.